Hello. Hello. Industry. 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 Hello and welcome back to Industry Tactics. My name is Friendly Rich and this is a podcast. So you have three mics here? Three mics. No, that's not a microphone. Now that, what we're doing here is we're actually recording your feet. So I hope you don't mind. No. This is a virtual reality camera. Oh, I see. I'm I'm in love with this we're in the, yeah. in, oh is there like a panorama yeah they're room? in the room they're in the room with us so welcome to bob weisman's studio upstairs at the oh, so now it's not just a podcast it's a video it's the first it's 20 a minutes the first 20 minutes we're doing is virtual reality i should have mentioned that up on the on the oh do you mean like front. with the heads you with can the... put the headset on really and they're in the room with us welcome well, but but it's only this is bob weisman but it's not but the headset's not really you, the camera should be in motion for for that to be is it does it like is it moving in some way or is it just stationary and that's just it just the whole panorama of it's the, so the viewer so the viewer is on your desk the viewer is looking down at your one of a kind keyboard uh, as he or she you looks mean, down you mean the perspective is that yeah. keys no they're on your desk and now and now they can see that your monitors they can see the the hallway they can see Mendelssohn Joe's oh, health I see what you're saying so it's a 360 yeah yeah Right, okay. So they're, and they're looking all oh, it's around. it's not too dim. Though. No, no, no. Welcome. Welcome to the How studio. How high do you think they'll do it? Do you think they see oh, yeah. stuff up there? Too? Yeah, they can see. Is that a Juno? <laughs> yeah. What is that up there? It's a Juno. Is I, that, no, like a Juno? Yeah, more than one. Oh, Bob Wiseman. I got that one there. Oh, yeah. shit. Okay, so let's, let's, <laughs> let's start it you know, up. I used to tour with it and use it to prepare the piano oh, and fuck. not tell the audience until, until I was in the middle of playing the thing and I would pull it out We're gonna and have people would start laughing because they recognize it. You can see that it says Juno Large. So. Do you yeah, see anyways. the smile on my face, friends watching in the VR? It's already first, first 50 set, one minute in and it's already my favorite podcast. Welcome to Industry Tactics. We're here in the corner. You see the word Hoper. He has peppered the walls with Mendelssohn Joe letters. I think that's what connects us in a way. Uh-huh. In, in one in one way. Yeah, there's one coming Bob down. Bob Wiseman. Bob Wiseman is one's coming down. Thank you the, for, the, for the for the virtual reality experience. Bob Wiseman just sure. got up, uh, and 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 Jun- and let me prep it. Juno Award winning uh, musician Bob Wiseman. Now Bob, I haven't prepped you. What's that? What the fuck is this? What is this? Hang on a second. <laughs> Hang on a second. Oh, it's my mom. <clears throat> Mother. Father. I gotta let you go. Bye. I love you. Bye. That was my dad. We just made spaghetti sauce on the weekend. But that's another conversation. I was prepping it. Sorry, Bob. Sure. We're, I haven't given you any heads ups, but I, I think people can find it online. We're going to start sure. with, we're, you know, I have, we, I have a lot to ask you. You know, you're a really important artist in my life. But also in this country, more importantly, fuck me. Um, you're, you started your career as a musician. Yeah. In Winnipeg. Well, no, I mean, I mean, I'm from Winnipeg, but I kind of I came here, uh, you know, I came here when I was twenty, so I didn't have a career. In, you know, I hadn't played in a band or anything in Winnipeg, uh, but I moved here. I moved here to study piano with Casey Sokol. You know, Casey I, Sokol, your yeah, university. Yeah, he's kind of a. He was a big uh, force for many people and still is. And um, when I was younger, mm-hmm. I started improvising. And that was kind of like a secret other thing that I did on the piano. You know, secret because it wasn't really anyone to share it with. And it was, and I was moving into the kind of wonky zone, not knowing that that was something already kind of uh, mapped by some musicians. I thought I just had this kind of like secret perverse pleasure in playing clusters and things when my when my mom when no one was home because mm-hmm. they would freak out if they heard me do put things in between the strings and do other wild stuff like and, Juno Awards <laughs> yeah so so somebody uh, one like I have I'm the youngest of four so one of my uh, brother's friends that was studying at York came back to Toronto and was at our house at Christmas or something and he heard me playing and he was like there's the guy the guy that we work with at York he he tries to teach that, you know, he would love you. And I, I remember that it really kind of, kind of piqued my, like, really? There's someone that's like, does that, this kind of thing or teaches this guy. That was like a real interesting thing in the back of my head. And uh, 
But that it was like a legitimized, or is, the, is that what you're getting at, or no? That getting somewhere else with this thing was something that somebody somewhere might be teaching. Okay. You know, it was okay. kind of like okay. a, really? You know, it's kind of like, kind of like hearing that there's a Merlin. You're not alone. Something. You're not alone, right? Yeah. Not only not alone, but <laughs> somebody else might be able to, you know, a, a yoga. open other doors yeah, yeah, and yeah, like, yeah, yeah. know about this thing, you know? So, anyways, yeah. to make a long story short, I ended up coming to Toronto to work with him. Did you hit it off? Was it awesome, or what? Well, it was intense. It was really intense, and okay. uh, and okay. I did really well in it. He was a bit of a, um, you know, I think about it now. He, mm -hmm. I was like twenty or twenty one. Mm -hmm. He, I think he was about thirty five, okay. and uh, and he had his own. He had he just uh, he he has two kids, and one of them was just born, and you know the first year you're living with an infant, it's not hard to kind of be present too because you have a lot of sleepless nights mm -hmm. and, uh, um. And uh, anyways, yeah, I was, uh, yeah, it was a pretty intense time in my life. I like slept in piano cubicles. I, yeah. you know, I didn't know Toronto. And I, so I had a place downtown. I didn't realize how far away York University was. And yeah. so it just made more sense to just stay there more often than not. And, and I just, right. I right. was kind of on fire. I didn't, I'm self-taught. I don't know how to read music. Yeah. I, I got in based on uh, sending a, a cassette tape of, what I could do that, yeah. kind of, that made them assume my sight le reading was at a certain level. I had to send in a classical piece and a jazz piece. Wow. And so once I got your, there, I realized, oh, piece? I can't do the. It was Blue Rondo the Turk by Dave Brubeck. And I realized, okay. oh, I can't. I had to drop uh, most of the courses because I couldn't do the work. But I didn't care because I really only came for Casey. And, and even when I. And awesome, when I, and, awesome. Oh, yeah, it gets more awesome or, or weird because when I got there. Yeah. And here I changed it. I mean, it's a big deal when you're 20 or 19 to do this kind of thing. It's like to change cities and have no money oh and God. get a grant. I mean, the stakes are really high. In your mind, it's, you know, you, you realize being older that it's not such a big deal. But for you at that time and place, it's kind of, you know, it's, it's, it's huge. freaky. And yeah. So, yeah. so I did all this stuff to, in order to study with this guy and then found out on the first day that I had to audition to get into the course. And it really... So it was make or break. You could have come all the way from Winnipeg. That's right. That's, that's that, fucked. And no one said that to no. me. Like I had no reason to be, you know, like, <laughs> I, and that might have made me not come, you know, because uh, right. I had a job in Winnipeg. So, and I, so I met Casey and he was kind of like, you know, well, I only take, uh, I forget, you know, I only take 15 people and there's like 40 applicants. And I'm like, oh. Okay. So anyways, I got my, you know, whatever, came my time to audition and... And I got in, and I, it was, it was a, it, it's a very distinct memory for me, because he was sitting on a couch, mm -hmm. and I was playing the piano, and he asked me to play, and he got up while I was playing, and went to stand behind me. And I just, and I just knew in my head that, like, oh, I'm in. Because a pianist doesn't stand behind another pianist, except no. to try oh. and see how they did what they're doing. You know, and it was kind of like, even though, uh, even though I'm a nobody, I realized this, this one thing that I'm doing right now, the fact that this guy wants to see how I'm doing it, I'm, I just kind of thought... That must mean I'm in, and I and anyways I was in, and uh, yeah, it was real intense working with him. It was a real beautiful thing because he he dropped a lot of references separate yeah. from the music. Yeah. He dropped a lot of references spiritually about the world, things that I was interested in too, from Sufism to Carlos Castaneda, you know, to like uh, he he to Ram Dass, and and wow, wow. and I got all those references, you know, because I I was interested in a lot of it, and and but it wasn't stuff that people knew about. I didn't think anybody else in the class knew of any of it and I so I was really I loved uh, I loved him I loved being there wow, it was a real wow. big deal to me and people in the class you know I, I did I did really well my friends would say you know he closes his eyes when you play people would tell me other things you know but and I just that I just stays you know, with you that it, stays with it you it did it meant a lot to me and I got a really I got an A plus and people so, told me he doesn't do that you know whether that's true or not but I you know it was a real it was heavy but I also realized by the mm. you know I had a couple a couple really amazing things happen before it ended one was I remember being alone one time in the main room that we worked in. Mm -hmm. Everyone was gone. I was staying there kind of for the night. And it was fun when I would stay there overnight. There would be like two professors who were always, who would be hanging out till late at night. A guy named Steve Bloom mm -hmm. and someone else. Anyways, so the point was, while I was in that room and they had a Petrov piano, um, there were some recordings or whatever. And that's where I first put on Cecil Taylor. And uh, they didn't know who he was. Mm -hmm. But I remember putting it on and realizing that the guy is just playing a series of music that's a lot of it's made up of costers or whatever mm. but the thing that like made me cry mm. was that it was I didn't realize it was a live recording and whatever the piece ended and an audience started to applaud oh wow and that just like was life changing to kind of realize 
Because that thing that he was doing with clusters, that was kind of the zone that I felt I was in as a kid that was like a secret thing that like, uh, I can't like share this with anyone, you know? Like, and it's just some, cool, some strange little uh, perversion in my life that I get, I'm getting, really getting off on trying to m sculpt sound, you know, for its own sake. Uh -huh. It has nothing to do with playing in the key of E flat or G. It's just, I'm, 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 playing, I'm playing bunches of notes and I'm shaping the color of them. And it's really, it's very exciting to me. And, and then when I heard this guy doing that, taking yeah. it to a yeah. more sophisticated level, yeah. and an audience clapping after it, and clapping for a long time after it, hey, wait a minute. I, I just, I like found my people. Yeah. It was like, yeah, it's yeah. like that moment in the jerk where he can snap his finger to Muzak. <laughs> it, it was like, oh, oh my God, I, this, is, this is where I belong. I, I, know, I know this language. Isn't that nice, that feeling of this is where I belong? Like, like you aren't alone in, in the, I, I mean... When it when it comes to you, it's 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 it's, uh, it's heartwarming. It's life changing, right? I love that hearing that 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 Casey that you hit it off and that it, what what you took a huge risk then to come. You may not have even known how risky it was to come to study with him to get accepted into into York. Um, how did you? My question is, so he's loving you, and I think a lot about what makes education tick is not the formality of it. Fuck that. It's Casey. Closing his eyes, saying, you know, you know, he closes his eyes when you, that's the stuff that you, that's the good stuff that you take with you. All the, all that he gave is enough. Like that individual, that mentorship is, especially with music education. It's not about so. So the other stuff, were you just out of curiosity? They didn't even let you into the party. No, you're not a formal music student. You can't read. Did they make it a fucking thing? Like a was it a thing? Like what what happened um, there? Like, I just so, realized I couldn't do the homework. They, they started, you know, talking about different things. We had to play different things. And I realized, holy uh, fuck, I, where I, am I? I can't, I, yeah, I can't. This isn't going to if, if I If I reveal to this woman that I don't actually read music, oh it won't God. make any sense to her. And why should it? Like, <laughs> I realized, if you're, if you're self-taught, yeah. you, yeah. you gauge yourself against the people that are, are readers and the ordinary classical world or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And that's fine. That's fair. Like, it's, uh, and, um. I, I mean, I also know I could play. It doesn't, my self-esteem's not injured. I, I, I know, yeah. in fact, what I did, and it was really the smartest thing I could have done, is I started going to the jam sessions at Grossman's on the weekends. Okay. Okay. And then I could sit in with other musicians. And they thought I was great. And because I felt really separate from the fact that I was having an intense relationship in Casey's class, I also felt like, I also, once I got to York, <laughs> there were a lot of people that were really brilliant players. And I saw a lot of them. And, mm -hmm. and I realized right away that I'm actually... I'm no big deal. I mean, I, I was a big deal in wow. Winnipeg, wow. but I'm like, oh, I'm just, I'm chopped liver here, which is a great thing that a person that is should nice. experience. Yeah. But it That's also good. made me feel like, what am I doing here? What's the point? And, and, and when I got to Grossman's and when I started to solo and play those jam sessions and yeah. when those other musicians who were older than me would like turn to me like, wow, yeah, or, one, or, or then the next week and the next, like ask me like, hey, come on, you know, get in with me, like that I was like uh, desirable. Uh, that gave me a different kind of confidence too when I would go back to York because I would look at some of the other guys because a lot of the music students then who are also only 20 yeah. a lot of them are really involved in intellectual pursuits like they want to talk about a piece of music whether it's Mixolydian or Lydian is yeah. it in 13 is it in, is it in 17 can you hear it and, and it's like that's fine but that's all just kind of like testosterone games or something yeah. you don't necessarily realize yeah. that when you're in, of that age and in that milieu so playing in the jam session and, 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 and feeling like I was uh, you know a uh, uh, a member of that really helped uh, my self-esteem move through being there at York. But I had to, yeah, I had to drop out of the ordinary music study stuff because I, I didn't understand it. But I understood improvising, and I and yeah. like and I and I and I understood Casey's problem of trying to talk about improvising to all these other classical people that were in our class. Right. You know, because right. I already was there. You know, like I just I just was you know ready to to play with it and jam and, and improvise and and try to. Um, work with structures and, uh, and, and, and work at other things conceptually that were uh, stimulating improvisationally, you know, yeah. like making my left hand be the soloist, you know, yeah. like, uh, yeah. like trying to, he would put a painting in front of us to play the painting, you know, to just yeah. do all these other things where like, yeah. that's all I wanted to do. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, so you're, who are you meeting at Grossman's? Uh, are there musicians there that you still remember? That you still oh yeah, um, but, uh, but I'm not really... That was a... Like, were you finding a, that a family really, there? Or, or, huh? Were you finding a family there in, in the musicians, or was in it more... In the short term. Okay. You know, the people that stood out to me... Um, what stood out to me in a lot of ways was a drummer named Ben Cleveland. 
uh-huh. uh, who just was a real natural improviser, powerful drummer. You know, you know, it's hard to just talk about one kind of instrument, but mm-hmm. but let's do it for a moment. And and drummers really can like destroy me, you know, like no one else. You know, like watching great drummers are it just it's so much like making a pilgrimage, you know, to some kind of mecca, you know, if they're great because because mm-hmm. they're speaking. They're not speaking anything that has to do with the, the modal things that we've studied, right? They're, and, and yet they're coloring, and they're coloring based on uh, an understanding of space and mm-hmm. time. Mm-hmm. And, and their fills are a whole other layer of, uh, of, of their knowledge. Mm. And, and then how they conduct their body while they're doing that. Some of them, you know, turn and look away from the kid the whole time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or, or, you know, or like it's, how do you explain, yeah, how do you yeah. explain great Bob, you know, like, <laughs> Jesus, let's try you know? and Yeah. 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 And it's, it's just such an incredible <laughs> thing of beauty. Great, great drummers. Uh-huh. Um, uh-huh. It's just, it's just so moving. So anyways, he stood out for me as, um, as like uh, that kind of thing of me feeling that I'm like in, in, in the same tribe that this guy is, in, okay. you know? Okay. Um, and uh, yeah, there were there there were interesting people there, but but soon after that, but I didn't I didn't I left after doing just one year at York because okay. I already you know at the end of that year I owed four or five grand to a student loan, mm. and I realized I got a high mark, but I also realized okay I'm I'm really good in this specialized area of music that has no audience, <laughs> so hmm. what's the point? Huh. Uh, and so I went to work. I just got a job working in uh, group homes because I had done a bit of that in Winnipeg. And uh, and I got a, a job and I could, and much uh, MTV and music videos had started around then it was like okay. early eighties yeah ish and uh, and I looked at that world and I just thought I don't fit what I see there at all I don't really see like I felt that I had a background of rock music too that was like part of my heart to to play in a band but yeah. I couldn't figure out how I could where where where, where the, where's the entry point for doing that for me okay and so I just thought. Well, I just, that's it. I've become a, a guy who works in like social work or whatever. And, uh, and then wow. through a series, like uh, the guys in Blue Rodeo, they're all the same age as, my brother is 10 years older than me, and they were all pals in New York. They were all waiters in restaurants there. And so they came back to Toronto, and the house that I had was renting from the beginning at York, my brother rented before me. And I, so kind of the rule of older siblings, it's not really my place, even though he's not there. It's kind of still... His, so he kind of just like announced to me that Greg Keeler was just going to stay there because once he got back from Toronto because he doesn't have a place to crash kind of thing. And so I saw him and Jim and I met them, you know, uh-huh. and, and then they and they heard me play the piano and they got really excited that I could play because uh, they were, you know, they were like at the level of a lot of, there's a lot of musicians and bands that don't have in, uh, powerful relationships with their instrument, that don't have a lot of uh depth and variety and dimension in their relationship with their instrument who mm-hmm. are very successful mm-hmm. and so uh so they they knew right away that they wanted me in this belly like before they told me you know i and and so you know, right? like one day they were like you know we we got a bass player and a drummer and would like you to come play with us you know and i'm like and i just thought well that's that's great i've always wanted to play in a band you know and uh and it, and, it, and that band was it was really surreal because it just outgrew its clothes every single show it just it was you know it was like a, a plot point in a hollywood film that it just like you know where, where like some you know someone's been it has inserted some some drug into the food mm-hmm. and then the, you know then superman their clothes are breaking and breaking and breaking you know like the band just got bigger and bigger and bigger it every single gig it just cartoony. gathered more and more people freaking out and loving yeah, it yeah embracing it wow and uh and and those guys having been in new york added a whole other cachet too because our fourth gig was at CBGB's. Okay. You know, because wow. they could book it because they had played there in their previous band um, that was called Fly to France. Okay. On my way to the first rehearsal, Greg already had the name Blue Rodeo. I remember saying to him, you know, if I join this thing, if, if, if we do this, you know, yeah. Yeah. You know I kind of have one condition, you know, uh, which is uh, you got to get rid of that name. <laughs> Blue Rodeo. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's, it stinks, you know, like, I, like it's got to be something else. Really? And that was a really, really? interesting, yeah, I, I just didn't think it was smart. And that was an interesting experience, interesting. too, because I realized, and when, whether objectively it's a good name or not, I uh-huh. realized that popularity itself sells something. Like, the fact that the band kept taking off made the name cool, I think. Fascinating, um, Bob. Yeah. Fascinating. Um, so that's one, <clears throat> so they had been... 
playing oh, so in, in New thing. York and, yeah, and developed an audience. And then no, I don't think they really developed an audience. They were just a nut, one of a zillion pop bands. Okay. And it wasn't working out, and they were broke. And they came back here to start again, figure out something new. And, um, yeah. And, um, and, he, and Greg Keeler happens to be staying at your brother's apartment. That's, fat, that's amazing, eh? Like, the, the oh, whole, yeah. like... I don't know well, the way well, that happened. The, well, like, well, here's the other thing. That's like, they heard you playing piano. Like, there's so much there. Oh, right? yeah, because I could like, play. And this is it. Like, they would give me most of the solos because they couldn't play well. Right. And, and, and it was like another improv assignment in Casey's class. Oh, okay. You just want Here me to go. solo. And you want me to just keep soloing. And, these, and the rules are just over two chords. And just keep doing it. And keep doing it. And keep doing it until you look at me to finish. And, and, it's not, and you're, sometimes you're letting me go for four minutes. Okay, cool. And it was like, so it's the songs in C. Okay, okay, I'll play in C sharp now. And then like, just like, and, and, and it was really like, a, a bring, brought, brought a, 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 a quality of, of free improv to this rock band. I mean, it ended up being interpreted as psychedelia by people. And, uh, you know, people, there would be interviews all the time. They would want to talk about uh, Garth Hudson mm -hmm, or mm -hmm. Ray Manzarek from The Doors or whatever. Yeah. And, uh, uh, you know, I, I know that music, but... You know, it all starts for me with actually learning the blues, which is what my brother fortunately taught mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I had, there's some there's some beautiful strokes of luck that have happened in my life, you know, and that one of them was that my brother taught me how to play the piano by giving me Otis Spann, who is like such a important kind of uh, music. You know, like later in my life, it became, you know, uh, I really absorbed a lot about, uh, in, in my own small way, of Keith Jarrett. But yeah, yeah. at the beginning, Otis Spann was kind of like this really important, <laughs> powerful musician to me. Wow. Um, anyways, um, that's that. I somehow we got into this Blue Royal thing. But uh, so if you guys wanna, if you're watching in VR, we're gonna turn you off now. Tune in at Industry Tactics for the rest of this fantastic story. We're gonna talk about the Juno Awards. Goodbye. Say goodbye to to our friends in VR land. But maybe we'll tickle them. You know, you know, for a long time I've been wanting to make my own awards, you know, <laughs> and, and say something like, you know, like certified wood. Certified <laughs> or, or, wood. Or, you know, like Triple certified wood. plastic or something else to kind of and make God them a lot larger it, than these, because I have some of these other ones up, but I kind of like, I put them up partly. That's fun. Because sometimes I work with straighter people and it like impresses them. Yes. But I'm not impressed with them. No, I kind of, and I'm more proud of the things that I've done that don't have to. Triple like that wood. Juno's for Blue Rodeo, and that's cool, but, you know, I, I've done lots of things, right? Like I... Sure. Sorry. Um, We're going to talk about triple wood when we come yeah, back. Yeah, okay. <laughs>